What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I'm Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the brand new 2024 Ford Edge, courtesy of Bob Ruth Ford in Dillsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So today we're in this one because my sister actually owned a Ford Edge for quite a while and she did like it when she had it. All wheel drive comes standard. You now get free navigation for three years. I'm talking about the factory navigation system as opposed to one year for the previous model year and this very well may be the last edge ever to exist so having said all of that in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 edge first one being the se starting at 38,365 sel for 39,000 565 ST line, which is the one we are in today, starting at $43,620, titanium for $43,720, and lastly, the ST starting at $47,205. And so, so you can imagine with all of these trim levels, there are actually two different power plants available for the Edge. First one is going to belong to all trim levels but the ST. That power plant is a two liter twin scroll turbocharged four cylinder, putting out 250 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, 280 pounds feet of torque coming in at 3,000 rpm power being sent to all wheels through an eight speed automatic zero to 60 time approximately 6.8 seconds and yes we will be testing that out in a little bit here but mpg numbers then coming in at 21 the city 28 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is that other engine configuration that one belonging to the st trim level that one is powered by a 2.7 liter twin turbocharged v6 putting out 335 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, 380 pound-feet of torque, coming in at right around 3,200 RPM, power sent to all four wheels yet again, but this time through a seven-speed automatic with paddle shifters. Zero to 60 time for this one, 6.1 seconds with MPG numbers at 19 in the city, 25 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel. So before we do any kind of fun acceleration test in our edge, I do wanna to mention to you guys, the drive modes, there's actually an S button located just in the middle of that circular dial, which by the way is how you put it in drive or reverse and park and all that stuff. But the S button is actually kind of a sport button and that's gonna adjust the gauge cluster slightly, throttle response, shift points, and actually the engine sound to a certain degree as well. So having gotten all of that out of the way now, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's press that S button and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 Ford Edge here up to speed. All right, in three, two, one, go. There it is. It's loud. It does, I can hear the engine sound. That is funny. I take it out, it goes away. That is crazy. So acceleration was plenty fine. So it's nothing crazy, but it's definitely not slow either. So you're not gonna have any issues there, but you can actually, you can hear the engine sound being pumped into the cabin when you press that S button. So that was kind of cool. Anyways, to go along with that acceleration as always, braking is equally important. So in terms of braking, of course, you will find four wheel ventilated disc brakes. They do come standard, of course. As far as braking feel goes, let's go ahead and hit the brakes. It's kind of spongy or squishy, I guess you could say. And that could be because I'm coming off driving a supercar, but yeah, it's a little bit of a squishy braking feel, believe it or not. I wouldn't have minded if they firmed up the braking feel a little bit. I think that would have felt a little more natural in this thing, but overall, it, it'll get the job done. I don't expect the Ford Edge to have anything crazy in terms of braking, but it does feel a little bit squishy to me. I'm just saying, but anyways, then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension. I will say the steering sensitivity is also adjusted for the ST trim level only. So you're gonna find a little heavier of a steering feel if you were to go with that ST trim level. So do wanna emphasize that. Speaking of, as far as steering feel goes, it's actually fine. It does lean a little bit more on the heavier side of things, but it's nothing crazy. This is an SUV after all, but it's not a loose steering feel like you traditionally find in most SUVs. So it is weighted a little bit more on the heavier side of things, which I personally appreciate. As far as ride quality goes, it's probably one of the first things I noticed when I got in this one. Ride quality is actually pretty darn good in my opinion. I've driven you know, several hundred SUVs at this point. So actually we're coming up on some uh, railroad tracks right here. Let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, it's fine. Absolutely no issues there. You shouldn't have any issues, but then touching on cabin noise, that's perfectly fine as well. Actually, to my surprise, this is pretty darn serene cabin, even driving over these 
pretty gravelly kind of roads that we got here right now. I don't even know what these roads are, but there is an acoustic laminate front windshield though that does come standard on all trim levels across the board. So that is going to definitely assist with a more serene cabin in the edge without a doubt. And you can tell, you can tell that difference there, but that touch of visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Typically in SUVs, you don't have any issues there either. And if you want rain sensing windshield wipers, go with the titanium or the ST trim levels. That essentially means whenever the edge detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Ford Edge. All right, and so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Ford Edge finished in Atlas Blue. In case you were curious of the exact exterior color name we had on this one. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number two, indicating that the Ford Edge is built and assembled in Canada. Go figure. Anyways, let's go ahead and start up front. That front grille, of course, is going to differ depending upon the trim level that you go with. Kind of, kind of have a silver diamond design for the SE and SEL trims black mesh design for the ST line like we have today and the ST as well and then kind of a thicker silver design then for the titanium which is kind of like the luxury trim level I guess you could say but added chrome accents towards the bottom for the SEL trim level and up you're going to find the LED headlights that does come standard on all trim levels across the board you also get the automatic feature of course along with automatic high beams so when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically then bounce it back up to high beams for you there and i did want to mention an optional feature here adaptive led headlights that is available that essentially means when you're going around a bend at night the headlights are going to swivel depending upon the angle of your steering better help illuminating what is around the bends you're less likely to hit a deer or a possum or a cyclist or whatever the case so that is available so i did want to mention that and also led fog lights coming on the st line trim level and up you guys can see them in the bottom corners but that pretty much rounds out the front end. It looks pretty much the same as last year for the most part. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the edge, black window surrounds coming with the SE, ST line, and ST. Then chrome window surrounds for the SEL and titanium trim levels. Rear privacy glass does come standard across the board. I like that. Body color power adjustable side mirrors for the SEL trim level and up. And then black side mirrors for the SE and heated side mirrors for the SEL trim level and up yet again. Then take a look down at the wheel setup, 18 inch silver aluminum alloys for the SE, 18 inch silver double five spoke alloys for the SEL. So yes, they get their own design there. 20 inch gloss black alloys for the ST line. This is what you guys are looking at. 19 inch aluminum alloys for the titanium and specific 20 inch machine finish aluminum alloys then for the ST trim level. So essentially every single trim level gets their own particular wheel setup. But I did wanna also mention though, we do have some ST line badging found on the front fenders there. I think that looks pretty darn good as well. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, and so now since we are around to the back of the Ford Edge, all the way to the top, you will find a matte black shark fin antenna. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that rear window wiper. LED taillights do come standard on every single trim level across the board for added illumination at night. And of course, just below the Ford logo there, you got some like the video and subscribe lettering. So I've been doing this for nine years now. I review as many new cars as I possibly can every single week. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you are into new car reviews at least. But then take a look down at the bottom here. I do like the gloss black accents found at the very bottom portion of that rear bumper. I think that looks pretty darn good. But you will find dual exhaust outlets for all trim levels across the board. Although you will get some kind of rectangular tips for the ST trim level. So I did want to mention that. But nonetheless, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the edge, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a power lift gate for the ST line trim level and up. So that was pretty darn convenient. There is a button on the key fob, there's a button on the lift gate itself, and also a button by the driver's left knee then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 39.2 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 73.4 cubic feet. It's actually a decent amount there. LED cargo lighting is available. There is a cargo management system, meaning uh, just underneath of that cargo floor, you actually have a decent amount of in-floor storage. But we do have an optional spare tire as well. So that's going to eat up a little bit of the storage if you go with that option. But I do like it back there because, you know, spare tire is a lot easier than a fix-a-flat kit, in my personal opinion, at least. 
But anyways, there are some grocery bag hooks back there as well on both sides of the cargo area. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 40.6 inches. That's impressive. For reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Typically, what I like to say in my reviews is anything over 40 inches is luxury side of things, like a, a Mercedes S-Class kind of thing or something like that. But Anyways, rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard for every single trim level across the board. You got some rear ventilation back there as well, along with charging ports. And in our ST line, we get the 110 volt power outlet, which is pretty darn cool as well. So if you're a guy, charge up your drill. If you're a girl, charge up your hair straightener, I guess. I don't know, but it's available for you. But then make your way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seats for the SE power adjustable active x seating for the sel st line and titanium leather suede combo for the st heated front seats for the sel trim level and up and then ventilated front seats are going to be optional but it doesn't come standard but overall seating was actually decently comfortable power lumbar was pretty darn adjustable and i do like the leather suede combination in this uh particular st line just like the st has so yeah seating was plenty fine for me but now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel this is pretty cool actually tilt and telescoping of course it is leather wrapped for the sel trim level and up and i like the red contrast stitching it is also heated then for the titanium and i will say the 10 and 2 grips are on the thicker side of things which i personally prefer but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup and let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your ford logo on the one side when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear lift gate there and the times two button is a remote start which by the way comes standard on the st line trim level and up but ultimately it is all keyless entry with a push button start for all trim levels so i'm just going to put my foot on the brake here and press that engine start button located kind of just by the driver's right knee and so what started up when it comes to the gauge cluster you're going to have kind of two small digital screens on both the left and the right hand side and then you got your analog speedometer front and center and so you can of course control what is on those digital screens by using the steering wheel mount controls found on the left and right hand side of the steering wheel that totally makes sense i like that but gives you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's a uh, tachometer up there of course there's your tire pressure information you can choose to display a digital speed speedometer up there as well if you wanted to and like i said when you put it in that sport driving mode it's going to display that tachometer on the left digital screen so that is pretty cool but anyways let's still go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality you're going to find a panoramic roof which is optional by the way on the sel trim level and up it's optional for all trims it goes for 1595 dollars to be exact and we do have it, so that's pretty cool. Overhead sunglass holder does come standard for all trim levels across the board, I like that. Universal garage door opener for the ST line trim level and up, and that is actually located on the driver's side vanity mirror, in case you were curious where that is at. Wireless phone charger for the ST line trim level and up as well, that's located just in front of the shifter. Dual zone climate control coming standard for all trim levels across the board, I do like that. Got a little bit of rubberized storage found kind of uh, just above the uh, infotainment screen here. I like the red contrast stitching found on the doors. That is pretty darn cool as well. Ties in together with the seats and the steering wheel. Again, just in front of the uh, shifter here, I guess you can call it a shifter. It's a circular dial, but you got a couple charging ports, a wireless phone charger to the right of the shifter. You have dual cup holders, electromechanical parking brake, and within the center armrest, there is a ton of storage. I feel like it's a cave that just goes on for infinity down there that is the deepest center storage within a center armrest i think i have ever seen i didn't expect to see that in the edge it's been a while since i reviewed this thing so that is pretty darn cool but anyways let's now go ahead and check out the infotainment screen here 12 inch color touchscreen display actually comes standard for all trim levels across the board and yes it's kind of a vertical tablet style screen i guess you could call it bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard android auto apple carplay factory navigation system for the sel trim level and up and again now with three years of free navigation updates so previously it was for one year for the 2023 model year of course you can check out your radio information up there as well and so when it comes to the sound systems you're going to find six speakers for the se sel and st line trims and then a 12 speaker bang and olsen sound system for the titanium and st trim so we do have the six speaker sound system with this here today so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one i gotta be honest that was a good bit of pace and tarn wells 
is one of the best singers on planet Earth, I swear to you guys. But anyways, yeah, that is a good bit of bass, more so than I expected for only six speakers in our particular trim level that we have today. Clarity was fine, it wasn't the very best, but it was okay, but the bass really surprised me. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the edge in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Not the highest quality out there, but it'll get the job done, which is always is going to lead us into safety and so IIHS top safety pick only if you go with those optional headlights that I mentioned when we were going over the exterior and that's why I wanted to mention them because this is not an IIHS top safety pick unless you go with the adaptive front lighting system so I'll put it that way front side side current airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but then also coming standard on the edge a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, post collision braking, pre collision assist with automatic emergency braking then as well. And then there is some optional safety that's gonna be adaptive cruise control and evasive steering assist then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the edge, this very well may be the final edge. Of course, I feel like manufacturers don't always stick to that before it has announced that this is going to be the final edge. But like I said, that isn't always the case. Sometimes they bring it back. So who knows? But if you wanted one, now is your chance. Plenty of rear legroom as well. That kind of surprised me. Typically with SUVs, you don't usually find as much rear legroom that is in the edge. So I do like that. As far as room for improvement goes, I think the driving dynamics are just kind of meh. Like regarding really everything from the braking to the acceleration to the steering feel it's just all kind of a it feels like a regular suv i'll just put it that way and the other thing is it's a very high base price for the edge when you compare it to the competition so if you're looking for this size of an suv there are a lot of other competitors that will offer a lower starting price point like substantially thousands less so that's kind of interesting as well. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the edge in the comment section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in the new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel. After all, I know I'm running low on fuel. I got it, Edge. I forget where I was at, but do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.